I've been working on a pull request for the NXtend repo, which is a fantastic collection of NX plugins maintained by Devon Shoemaker. One of the plugins in this repo is for Ionic Angular applications. And what this does is it provides a convenient way to create a new Ionic application inside of an NX workspace. What I've been working on to contribute to this plugin is an additional generator that will allow you to create a new page in an Ionic application once you have already created the app in your NX workspace. So just like how you can create a page in a normal Ionic project with the Ionic CLI, I can just create a new page using this generator, uh, specify the project in the NX workspace, and that is going to create it for me. So this pull request is still open as a draft at the moment, so you can't use this yet. I'll add a note in the description if this does get merged, but I thought it would be useful to walk through what I've coded for this as the core functionality is complete and it touches on some more advanced NX generator concepts. Okay, so now on to how this works. I've briefly touched on NX generators before, so if you want a bit more context, you might want to check out the video I'll link in the description. But the basic idea is this. Generators allow you to automate the creation and modification of files in your NX workspace. So we're going to jump right into it and I'll explain why this generator is a little more tricky as we go. So what we're looking at now is the actual NXtend repo or rather a fork of it. So what I've done to get to this point is just fork the main NXtend repo using the fork button here into my GitHub account. I've cloned that, downloaded that locally to my machine. So I'm working on my fork of NXtend here. And then I've just generated a new uh, generator using the NX console here. So we can just type in generator. Then I've just given this a name of page and inside of the Ionic Angular plugin. And I'm not going to run this obviously because I've already created it, but that is how I got to this point with my own little generator inside of this existing repo. So we'll start with the basic part. A page in an Ionic application is really just a normal Angular component that we call a page by convention. If we want to generate a page, then we need to generate all of the files required, like the component class itself, the template, the styles, the routing, and optionally the unit test file. So obviously I'm generating an Angular component here, but these same concepts apply to whatever language or framework you're using. When creating an NX generator, we can supply all of the files we want to create inside of a files folder. So these are the files that are going to be created when we run the generator. But these files do look a little strange though. First of all, they have a .template extension on them. So what this is going to allow us to do is dynamically replace the content inside of this file. So in this case, I want to replace the class name, uh, the selector tag, and the path for the template and styles based on whatever the developer supplies in the command line when using this generator. So as you just saw before, to use this generator, you need to supply a name for the page, and that is what is going to be used in these files. The other weird thing about these files is the names of the files themselves. I use underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. So just like we replaced values inside of the files, I also want the names of these files themselves to change dynamically based on what the user supplies. So if I'm creating a page called detail, I want the name of this file to be detail.page.ts. So these values that can be supplied are defined in the schema file. You can see that these are the options that I'm expecting from the user and the schema.json file provides a little bit more information about how the command line interface should work for this generator. And then we have the generator file itself that is responsible for running all of the generator logic. So a lot of this will be more or less the same for most generators, and you will just keep a lot of the code that is auto-generated for you by NX when you create the generator. So it can be a little bit intimidating to look at, but mostly you're probably going to be able to get away with just keeping the generator as is when it's generated and then just tweaking things a little bit. And if there's anything you don't understand that you're looking at, you can kind of just look that up to see what's happening. So let's talk through what's actually happening here. So first of all, we have a normalize options function. 
And we have a couple of these little uh, helper sort of functions defined in this file. And if we go back to our schema here, you can see that we have the page generator schema, which defines that we want the name, the project and the directory, which makes sense. But then we have this normalized schema that extends the page generator schema. And the reason for this is that we want some additional values defined when we're using this generator. And in this case, what I want is a path, the full path to the project root in the workspace. So this isn't a value that the user supplies, but it's something I need. So what I'm doing is creating that value manually based on what the user passed in. And then I'm returning a new options object that includes this little extra value that I want to make use of. And then we have an add files function. So this is what is going to handle adding these template files when the generator is invoked. And you can see here we are creating some template options. And this is what is responsible for supplying the name, uh, class name, uh, file name values to these templates that we've created. So you can see here we're making use of this names method that we are importing from Narwhal dev kit. So what we're doing here is we're passing in whatever name the user supplied. So that might be something like detail. And then this is going to generate several different names based on whatever was supplied. So we might want that name formatted slightly differently depending on whether we're using it as a class name or a file name. So with a file name, we're going to use a kebab case where we have everything separated by a hyphen. But with a class name, we're going to use a sort of title case where all the first letters are capitalized. So that's why inside of our template, we can use these values here, these variables like file name and class name, because it is being passed in using these template options. Then we define the page directory. So this is where we want these files to actually be created in the project. So if no directory is supplied, then we just want to create them at forward slash source forward slash app. But if the user does supply a directory, we want to add that onto the path as well. Uh, some people might want to keep all of their pages in a directory called pages, for example. And the last line here just executes generating those files using that directory and the options we supplied. And it also lets it know where to actually grab those files from, which is this files folder here. And the last little bit we have here is the page generator function itself, which is what is actually going to be executed. So all we're doing here is creating those normalized options. We're calling the add files method. And then we get to the tricky part, which is calling this update app routing module method. So when we create a page, we don't just need to create the page itself. We also need to modify the existing app routing.module.ts file. So if we just switch over into my little test project here and I'll open up the main app routing module file. You can see that for each uh, page component we have, we have a path to find and then how to import the module for that. But this file is shared among all of the components. It's not generated for each new page. So what we need to do is somehow when we are adding a new page, like a detail page, we want to automatically create a new route inside of this file. So modifying files with structured content in NX, like a JSON file is relatively easy because it has a predictable structure and NX has built in support for doing this. But we need to modify a TypeScript file, which does not have a predictable structure. So what we can do with NX is just read that file as a string and modify it and write it back. But if we have this file as a string, how are we going to know how to find the location where we want to actually insert our new route? Fortunately for us, there is a better method than just doing something like manually searching in a string or using rejects or something like that. What we can do is use an abstract syntax tree. Now I'm not going to give too much of an explanation about abstract syntax trees, mostly because this was the first time I have actually used one. But the basic idea is that it represents the structure of some text as a tree of nodes. So for our TypeScript file, this allows us to search through the constructs in our file, like variable declarations in a structured way, kind of like how you would write CSS selectors to target specific parts of your document. We want to find the specific part of our TypeScript file we are interested in and then insert our new code there. 
So to help with this, what we can do is use AST Explorer. And what you can do is just paste in the code that you are trying to modify. And you can use this Explorer to sort of investigate the structure of it and figure out how you might target the specific thing you want to do. So what we want to do is insert a route, say uh, in the middle of this array here. So what I can do is paste this here, make sure that it's set to uh, TypeScript at the top. And then I can just browse through the structure on the right here. And so what you can kind of do is just hover over everything. So you can see here, if I hover over statements, that's highlighting everything. So if I then expand that and continue hovering over things, I eventually get to my variable statement here. You can see that's highlighted. I can expand that again and I get to the declaration list. Keep going down, I get to a variable declaration. I then find this initializer, which is the values. Again, I keep drilling into that and we get to elements. And then we get to a point where now we can see the individual routes as object literal expressions. So now we are around the point where we want to be. We can sort of find specific routes within our routes array. And in this case, what we're going to do is since we want to grab this uh, routes variable, what I can do is uh, expand that and I can find the name of that variable in here. And in this case, we can see here, we can access the escape text and see that it is named routes. And so this seems like a pretty good strategy for us to use. We can grab the array called routes and use that to insert our new value. Now, obviously this is very specific and it relies on the fact that this array is called routes. Now that is the case with an Ionic project. It is called routes by default and that's what it's auto generated. So that's generally going to work for people, but you would need to consider if this is a viable strategy for whatever you want to do. If the user might call it something other than routes, then that's going to be a problem. So the basic idea here is reasonably straightforward. The trick is coming up with the logic to appropriately find and update what you want in the file. So once we do have some kind of strategy here, we can write the code necessary to actually replace what we want. And so in this case, what I'm doing is I've just created this update at routing module in a separate little library here because it has quite a bit of code and this is how it works. So what I'm doing first is reading in that at routing module file. And then I'm using this TS query package to actually get that abstract syntax tree structure that I can search through. So I pass in the file that I've read into tsquery.replace and then I add in my logic for searching through that tree. And so what you're seeing here is basically me just accessing the various sections of that tree that we just went through. We're sort of drilling into the location we want. And I'm also casting these to specific uh, TypeScript type so that I get the auto completion in here as well, which makes things a lot easier. And so eventually we get to that section we were interested in. We check that it is called routes, which was the strategy we just talked about. And then inside of that, we do what we want. So what I'm doing here is just setting up what we actually want to insert. So this is what the route will look like and what the route will look like will depend on if a directory was supplied or not. But the basic idea is that we're just using the, the name that was supplied and the import path that we're generating up here. And then we are looking at the elements inside of that routes array that we found in our abstract syntax tree. And what we're doing is finding the location where we want to insert it. So we can reference a specific node that we are interested in and we can call the get start method. And what that is going to do is it's going to tell us the location in that string that is the file, the location of that string where this particular node starts. And we can use that position to basically split apart the string and insert what we want into the string in that location. So I create a prefix and a suffix here. So this is basically everything before that location and everything after that location. Then the new routes will be the prefix, then the route we wanted to add, and then the suffix. And then all we do here is check that the, the new content that we returned, we check that that's not the same as the existing content. And if it's not, if we have made a change, then we call the write method to actually change that file. 
And finally, we just call format files to apply the prettier settings to any files we've created or modified, and we are done. So let's see that completely in action now. So I'll go back to my little test project here and we will create a page called detail. And the reason I'm able to access this generator in this test project here is because I've used NPM link to link this up to the uh, nextend repo that I'm working on here. And the nextend repo itself actually has some uh, instructions on how to do that if you want to take a look. So I'm creating a page called detail inside of the project called my app. So let's just run that. And you can see here that it's created those files and also updated the app routing uh, module file as well. And you can see over here on the left now, we have our detail page with all of the files that we expect. And it's got the detail uh, name being inserted wherever necessary. And if we open up the app routing module file, we can see that we have successfully automatically inserted that route into this uh, routing file. So obviously this got a little bit complex with having to modify that routing file, but a lot of the time with generators, you're only going to need to be creating uh, just these new files anyway, or perhaps updating some JSON files. So it won't always be this complex. A lot of the time you can just generate the generator, supply your files, use more or less basically the same default generator that's auto created for you and you're pretty much good to go. But if you do need to do something more complex, the ability to do that is there. And there isn't really any limit to what you could do with something like an abstract syntax tree. So you could get very creative with what you do with your generators. Okay, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.